What's up you guys, and welcome to the second edition of Maps That Should Be in Team Fortress 2. In the first video we looked at mostly payload based maps, but this time we've got a little bit of everything, from attack defend to king of the hill, payload, and even control points. Now like last time, I've chosen community maps I personally could see making in the game based off of looks, creativity, and how well each map plays. Except for a few I don't think quite would fit into TF2's theme. Anyways, hopefully once you guys see these maps, you'll all come to agree though that these maps are amazing and absolutely should be in the game. So, without any further ado, let's start up this second list. Fulgur. Created by ASG Alligator, Fulgur is an incredibly unique attack defend map, not necessarily because of how it's played, but because of its overall theme. The creator of this map actually based the entire thing off of supervillain layers, something we've never seen in TF2, gaining inspiration from movies such as James Bond and The Incredibles. And the theme translates over amazing, giving us cool sights such as a helicopter pad for the first point, a giant rocket for the last, a death ray in the background, a sleek modern waterfall, and all these glass offices that really make you feel like you're in someone's villainous hideout. Honestly, there's a lot more I could point out about the unique looks of this place, but I should also say that this map plays super well. It's never too close quarters, but it's not too open, and there's always multiple routes to attack from at each point. My favorite example of this is point B, where you can go straight to the point, above it in the vents, or below it on this suspended bridge. Anyways, this map is incredibly well done, and I think would be a great addition to the small stack of attack defend maps we have now. Undergrove. Speaking of incredible maps, Undergrove was created by Dr. Spud E. Arkham Sweeper Tank with inspiration from Freya. Now, I'll just start by saying this is one of the best King of the Hill maps I've ever played. As far as style goes, it mostly mimics the TF2 rural style, but yet just a little different, as it takes place out in the middle of a forest going in between multiple barns. What makes this map so great though in my opinion is just how close quarters it is, its use of differing heights, and how many different routes you can attack from. For instance, the main point is absolute chaos, but yet tons of fun, as you can attack from the side, underneath, above off these platforms, or just straight through. And it's got a little bit of everything for each class, such as sniper sight lines, places to dominate with sentries, places to trim for demo nights, and more enclosed routes to avoid being too open. Because of this, Undergrove games can end up being really intense, but a lot of fun. And as someone who doesn't even play a lot of King of the Hill, I really enjoy playing this map, so I can definitely see others enjoying it too, and maybe even making a debut in competitive someday. Surely. Created by UEAK Crash and Freya, Shoreleave was a very unique payload map planned for the Frontline Community update, but unfortunately the update just never came to fruition. But nevertheless, this map has been updated multiple times since its debut and has turned out great since. Aesthetically, this map uses a lot of the old English style you'd see used in MVM map Rottenburg, but with a lot more to offer, such as this magnificent starting point, decked out accessible stores, a minefield, a giant warehouse, and of course, the return of the tank cart. Now the point of this map is to push the tank cart to the end of the map and blow up your enemy's building. On the way there, you should have a lot of fun, as the map is pretty spacious with a lot of interesting alternative routes. At one point, one of these alternate routes is even made by your tank itself. If your team manages to push all the way to the end, your tank meets with the target hotel and rewards your team with this stunning display. Now I used to think maybe this would be too much for TF2, but then again, this is the same game that lets you launch rockets at buildings and blow up trains, so... I'm pretty sure this would make the cut and instantly become a payload favorite. Slaughter. A map that needs almost no introduction, Slaughter was created by Void, Juniper, and Diva Dan. Now many of you might already know this map as the King of the Hill map being used in the current Creators.tf community update. However, what many of you may not know is, this map kind of already debuted in TF2. You see, if you haven't been paying enough attention to detail, you might not have realized that this map should look oddly familiar. That's right, Laughter, the Halloween map we saw last year, was actually based off of this map, and for the most part, seemed favorable. Instead of being outside surrounded by carnival themes, however, Laughter takes place inside of, well, a morally questionable butchery. Here you can find all sorts of interesting scenery, such as radiation-filled beef, a meat display possibly gone wrong, and one of my favorites, a work poster telling its employees to avoid the FDA. Besides the hazardous theme though, this map actually plays really well and has plenty of different paths you can attack from, one of my favorite being ambushing from the treadmills up top. 
Anyways, in my opinion, if its Halloween counterpart has already been put into TF2 and the community's been loving it at creators.tf, I say it's about time we finally put the original Slaughter in official map rotation. Chasm. Created by mapmaker Randolph, this map may not look like much at first, but ends up being one of the funnest maps you'll ever play. Taking the term King of the Hill quite literally, this map takes place on a giant hill in the middle of the night. However, there is one catch. In the middle of the map is a giant cratering hole, thus making for some of the most dangerous gameplay you'll ever face. You can be pushed off the main point, blown off the stairs just leading to the point, or even blown off this teeny bridge connecting both sides. For obvious reasons, this map could make for a pyro's wet dream, but to be honest, really every class has to be careful on this map, so you'll want to take advantage of the alternate routes and close quarter buildings to move your way around. But honestly, playing over this giant hole really does add an interesting theme to the map and makes for some devious yet interesting plays. Let's just hope Valve doesn't find this map too dangerous for comfort. And lastly, we have Mist. Created by Huddy, this control points map was actually designed for competitive TF2, and if you ever had the chance to play it, you would understand why real quick. This map takes place in what looks like an abandoned facility being overgrown with plant life, and to be honest, kind of gives me portal vibes, which fits in well considering this is a Valve game. But beyond just its looks, this map is intense. It's very wide open in a lot of spaces, but certainly not lacking other ways around, and you'll constantly be switching between high ground, mid ground, and lower passages. There's great sniper sight lines, various places to put down sentries, and tons of areas for soldiers to rocket jump around with. And on top of all that, each point is separated by a pretty far amount of space, so if your team's not on their game, it'll only make it harder to cap the next point. So if hard neck-to-neck -neck battle is your kind of style, you'll love this map. And because of this, I could absolutely see this being used with comp, officially or non-officially, and of course being used in regular casual rotation. But anyways, that about wraps up this second episode of Maps That Should Be in Team Fortress 2. Some honorable mentions I'll throw in this time are Meridian, a capture the flag map done in attack defense style with some really interesting scenery. Treehouse, a map that takes place exclusively up in the trees with a long way down. And Doom, an indoor research facility taking place on Mars. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you ever want to play on any of these maps talked about here or on an episode before, consider checking out my Patreon or subscribing on Twitch. The funds all go to keeping the server up and supporting my dream of hopefully doing this full time someday. I really appreciate any donation and I hope to see you there. And until next time, as always, this was Big Joey! Later.